Hi, let me introduce you to the digital circuit and system subject, okay? And this subject will consist on basically three chapters, chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, on combinational circuits, uh, sequential systems, and finite state machines, and microprocessors or microcontrollers. That's the main aim of this introductory course on digital technology, okay? So that is what we have in mind. Let's design combinational circuits and sequential systems using BHDL tools such as Quartus Prime and Model Sim. And then let's switch to microcontroller technology so that we will program, for example, a PIC 18F chip, you know, using C language. That is what we have in mind in this course, basically, you see. Uh, talking about target chips like field programmable gate arrays and microcontrollers and use the right tools to get and to design uh, real world applications based on this kind of digital technology. Okay, that's it. And if we talk about laboratory training boards and target chips, we will focus basically, as uh, as we have said before, in FPGAs, okay? For example, we will use an Intel board like this, where you have here, you see, in the center of the board, you know, the FPGA that will be programmed with a corresponding configuration file. So this board will behave, you see, like a combinational circuit or as a sequential system. That's the idea. And later on, in chapter 3, practically the same thing. But this time what we will have here is a microprocessor, a microcontroller for a microchip, for example, a PIC-18. And this is the type of the kind of board that we will have for prototyping, you see. So here is where our application will be download it. That's the point, okay? And as you can imagine, this is only the beginning because later on you can continue working on digital technologies, you see, uh, developing systems on programmable chips or gate arrays or application-specific integrated circuits and many other uh, complex digital systems for professional applications in telecommunication systems and networks, naturally, you see. That's just, so what you see here with this chapter 1, 2 and 3 is, as I say, just the beginning. Well, a good way to start in some way or another using uh, state-of-the-art uh, tools, you see, for programming and configuring integrated circuits using the, the right hardware description languages and simulators like Proteus, virtual simulation models, and, well, these kind of applications that are here to stay and to be used once and again in your future professional life in some way or another, right? Right, so uh, the, the main, you know, the main intended uh, learning outcome of this course is just that one that you see here reflected or written in this paragraph. Let's use, you see, let's use cross-curricular competences like teamwork, self-directed learning, let's put into practice, you, know, you see, the English language. So let's go and write and talk about, you see, the projects that we have in mind. And finally, let's, you see, comply with the time organization and the due date for every one of the projects. So you see, the learning goal is just that one here using cross-curricular skills like those ones here and, you know, project-based learning methodologies, let us systematically analyze, you see the verbs, design, simulate, implement, 
report, present, and finally, you see, report or reflect about digital circuit and systems, you see, programmable logic devices and BHDL, microcontroller and C language, and many other labs skills, you see, let's reflect about this kind of digital circuit and systems, well, this way, using the state-of-the-art programmable devices, as you have seen before, computer-aided design tools, electronic design automation, software tools, and lab equipment. So, in this way, you, you will be, you see, designing projects. That's the point with this uh, broad learning goal. Uh, you, you can synthesize the course in this paragraph and that's not bad you see it's quite ambitious that is what we have in mind all over the semester so if we have in mind the specific content on digital circuits you see there are plenty of tools of all kinds because this is a technology that is evolving for 60 years now and you can find here plenty of tools of all kind you know free tools and most of them commercial tools that perhaps they have a free version for you as a student to be used in that kind of classes so for example we will use proteus simulator and then we will pick up for example quartus prime from intel company and then we will use model sim from mentor graphics connected together with quartus prime you see, to synthesize and simulate BHDL circuits, you see, and, and that is for a target chip from Intel, for example, Max 10 Technologies, you see, so that's the idea. Then what else? For example, we can use, you see, microchip chips, for example, uh, using the MPLAB X integrated developing environment for microprocessors along with with the free version of the x 8 compiler in this way we will be able to use the c language all right that's the point so we have plenty to choose because in the same way that we are choosing intel tools we can choose shiling tools or lattice tools and many other microprocessor manufacturers so that's just an example of some tools to be used for these introductory purposes here okay and so if in the other side you see from the other perspective if we have to talk about genetic tools here it's uh, you know there are a myriad of them many many tools from many companies that can be used to organize projects and develop uh, to a given point this kind of uh, cross-curricular skills you see you can use microsoft office or you can use the bco you can communicate effectively using thunderbird you can de design projects using the gan diagrams or you know, you can have now access at the UPC premises, you see, as a UPC student to the Google suite. And so you can, you can submit and you can organize chat rooms and many, many other uh, situations for provoking, you see, uh, instantiating the learning process. And basically, you see, we will use network drive uh, and, well, uh, basically, we have to talk about one thing that is going to be repeated all over the semester is this idea of handwritten stuff. You see, this is what we want for you, from you. You, you have to be good at the sketching and generating diagrams, the schematics and flowcharts and all kind of handwritten materials because later on, if necessary, you see, you can, you can rewrite this handwritten stuff into you know into a word processor we, we just a, a formal document using word processors but now here in this cures in this cures we will put our all the emphasis in these you see handwritten materials that's it okay 
planning the second activities is not going to be difficult because in some way everything all the activities that you can imagine you see the theory and the lab classes and your individual time is in some way devoted to solving projects projects everywhere all right so that is what we have in mind projects that if it's possible will be like real world applications all the time so all the theory you see it's about projects all the lab is about designing projects project for chapter one project for chapter two and project for chapter three including you see oral presentations why not and then naturally we will ask you some individual questionnaire and just the theory and what you know what you know and what you get from here is going to be assessed using exams as usual but you know all the activities goes around projects so your weekly study, study plan is that simple we will be you will be with us you see uh, in some way of guided learning by means of classroom lectures discussions theory project tutorials examples all over for all over 15 weeks you see and you will solve in this way guided way you see uh, laboratory projects every week two hours uh, perhaps you see developing teamwork sessions and you with us in chat rooms and etc and that is the guided learning section of the weekly plan but you know there is something that is extremely important here in this course is this idea of the self-directed learning that you have to carry out yourself in this way you see with your colleagues a student conducted teamwork sessions and you the many individual work that you can every week so let it be if possible about five or more than that hours per week so you see 15 weeks 10 hours per week this is what you are matriculating here 60 cts or what you know 150 hours for the full csd course that is what we have in mind so the projects that we will tackle you see and we will try to go designing the more real the better for example why not something like this you have a keyboard and you have a digital system with uh, with this mission you know open a given door you see you have a relay that is connected to a motor that can uh, open or close a given door if you are typing in the right you see secret code so that is the typical real example that you find everywhere so why not perhaps you get some motivation this way trying to solve you see with the content of this course you see this kind of real world problems and applications you see instead of running the course through a book and solve you know academic and boring exercises on bulls algebra we will switch the course to this idea of trying to solve as many real world problems as possible like this one and you see something else why not such secret as you can imagine can be solved in many different ways so why don't we try to solve it by both using both technologies you see using bhdl and f pga chips and using microcontrollers and c language so you have this extra uh, possibility here you see of comparing alternative designs for the same product you see so if this is an industrial product that you can go and manufacture why not you have the idea of designing it in two different ways that's going to be good i guess so right so that is the typical example we will go this way inventing clocks inventing counters you see uh, shift registers and many 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 more applications related to this uh, real world and as you can imagine the projects are not solved uh, alone you see you have to be in a group better if it is 
a cooperative group. You see, people that has this kind of the same aim. You see, so let's try to put that complex idea into practice. Let's try to develop cooperative learning, cooperative learning by means of these des designing projects. And, but that is, as, as I say, it's not a simple idea. Okay, it. it you, you can go and practice cooperative learning, something that has uh, very good basics here and it is very well established as a learning methodology. You know, it is five points that you have to consider in order to develop you so up to up to some point this uh, this cooperative learning. For example, there has to be positive interdependence between the team members, right? And the team members are connected, are obliged in some way to rely on one another to achieve the common goal of learning this subject and passing very well with a very good grade. That's the idea. So th that's the first thing. Positive interdependence, you see, like the musketeers. All right. And then, uh, yes, you are three people in the group. So every one of you have to have this kind of individual accountability. There is no one that can be hiding behind the others, you see. All you three have to be accountable, you see. You have to do your share of work and you have to master the class content and the project. You have to be able to explain the project. Any one of you have to be able to do that kind of uh, accountability right and then naturally if you are working together now uh, you have to develop face-to-face -face interaction you see you have to be active okay you have to provide uh, feedback you have to challenge your colleagues okay you have to reason publicly you see you have to share what you know with your colleagues and you have to try to develop that. So there is nothing like being shy and passive. That's just the contrary. You see, you have to go encouraging people and you see, encouraging one another, you see, and perhaps you can go and teach your colleagues in some way or another, if you know something and your colleagues do not know that yet. So it's you who has to try to explain what you know to your colleagues. Well, let's do it like that. Let's try, because that is in some way very complex to develop at the level that you are now, you see. But just the beginning, just uh, let's try to see if it works. It's a challenge, but it, it can be solved. And naturally, you see, you have to use uh, collaborative skills, you see. Yeah. You, you have to be in some way a leader of the group. You have to make decisions. Uh, you have to solve conflicts. What happens if one of you is not working enough or with the right uh, quality level? So you have to solve this kind of conflicts. Perhaps sometimes what happens is that the group splits, you see? And that is something that you have to manage because that is the real, that is the way it works in the industry, you see. You have to manage the conflict that arises when the people try to work together, all right? So let's make this teamwork effective as possible. And well, if you work together through several projects, naturally uh, there is this idea of self-assessment and the way you have to check yourself the way the group is functioning and working and getting the things done all right even be before the due date and that is not easy so if one of the projects has not been satisf satisfactory solved you better go you see and assess yourself what is that you are doing rightly as a team and what is that you still need to go practicing a little bit more to be more effective in the future? Because naturally, not 
always, there is not always, the things are not going to be always working fine. So that is what is the meaning of this self-assessment. You don't have to wait until you get a fail in a project to react. If possible, do that kind of self-assessment and communicate each other uh, impressions and, and what you get from the group and the teamwork so that you can do it better if that is the case, okay? Annotate, uh, you see, what is going wrong and try to correct that for the next project, all right? So that is the fundamental steps, the fundamental points in which you see the cooperative learning is based. And as I say, this is really, really a challenge for you. But, well, let's try to put that into practice, this kind of methodology, because, you know, in the real world, it's just something that is there. It's necessary and uh, in, some, in some way that is going to be asked to you, right? In your professional world. Well, fortunately, we have, you know, all the course content online and for free and in open. You see, we have Digital Secretan Systems webpage, dixisupc.edu, you see, and here you have the full line of projects and how the circuit is organized, learning materials and all kind of stuff, you see. So, you see, we have a kind of a, a web page that is just a, an ebook or just a portfolio, a teaching and learning portfolio where you can, you, you will have everything, you see, several examples of projects and then the term. You can go and follow the term timeline. So here you have annotated all the important due dates and exactly the way that you have to go through lesson by lesson to the end. That's it. Okay, there is this uh, planning session by session, hour by hour. In some way, the, the course is subdivided into units. Of, so you have 60 hours and all of them are organized like this. You see, you have lectures, uh, project by project lectures, lectures, and then you have the lab assignments and the project that you have to solve and even the sub-projects, okay? The sub-projects in which the project of every chapter is subdivided. So here you have them all, and even examples of questionnaires. So everything is here, so you can just go week by week, session by session, trying to follow this lab timeline. And, well, not only the lab timeline, but the course, you see? The course planning. That is what you've got here in this Dixie's web. So it is really that simple. You cannot get lost if you think about, you see, following this course uh, one day after the next. So in Dixie's web, you will find, as I say, examples of exams from previous semesters, collections of samples and tutorials, uh, a lot of BHDL files, BHDL files to copy and adapt for the new projects to design, examples of questionnaires, and then we will keep you in threads of comments and queries related to each tutorial and problem. For example, using the, the chat rooms in Atenea or in Google Suite, right? That's it. And naturally, there is something else that I that we have to say here, and that is very important. You are not alone. You can use the email anytime, all right, given the corresponding rules, you see, which means that you have to use your UPC email, basically, all right, using your UPC email, and that institutional or professional email, you can ask us, whatever, any kind of query asynchronously, or you know, if, if you like, you, we, can, we can hold mid-sessions, you see, and we can talk together about anything related to the projects that we are going to solve during the course. And naturally, this is nothing, there is nothing like this that is here, you, you see, you have a lot of bibliography to check, if you like, on this subject. So you have a lot of books about digital circuits that you can study and read. 
Okay, the assessment scheme has been simplified and it's like this, you see it like a typical subject. 50% in two exams, the individual questionnaires on Atenea, you see 15% and then the projects, the lab projects, 35%. That's the typical assessment scheme. And well, your provisional grading, you see your performance is available at Atenea, you see, so you know the way you are performing all the time. And basically, the assessment is highly related to project organization. You see, this is the way we will work all the time. One, two, three, and four. Specify, plan, develop, and test. And finally, a handwritten report. And time to time, we will solve uh, you see the experiment, the project for real, downloading the codes and the configuration files into the real chip. But normally, that's it. One, two, three, and four. And finally, reporting what you've been uh, preparing for the project. Okay, that's the idea. Very simple, indeed. Once and again, the same one, two, three, four. That is what is counting here to get you great, right? And, okay, in order to finish this short presentation, uh, why not? Let me tell you important issues here in this course so you, you can take them into account. For example, if you like to get marks, the project solutions has to be submitted in the right format. But... Above all, they have to be submitted before the due date, never after the due date. That happens all the time. So, please, submit your projects before the due date if you like to get marks. Because after the due date, your project, even if it is 100 pages long, is for nothing. It's going to be correct. Not, it's not going to be correct. All right? And the exams will be seat at the school premises, you see, and well, pen and paper and a scientific calculator is as usual. Class attendance is requested, okay? We like you to be there in class, all the classes, okay? Yes, we know that is not an obligation for you, but, but it's very recommendable. You better be in class and you better be engaged and participating actively, you see, in all the activities and promoting cooperation with your lab group. That is something essential. You will get better grades if you work like this instead of being alone and skipping classes and the like. So better be in class all the time, you see, because it's a lot better to get all you need from this course. And finally, well, uh, the laboratory attendance is compulsory, okay? You get marks if you are in the lab, okay? Uh, besides, you have to be working with your colleagues in group. So if you are not there, you will be, you will be penalized in some way or another. Your group is not going to work properly well if you are not there in the lab trying to solve your exercises and your projects. And then, as you can imagine, respecting the academic dishonesty, well, uh, there has to be some kind of penalties if you try to go cheating and copying exams or exercises or projects. So the first times that you are doing such, you get a zero, you get the null, right? No marks. If you do that another time, we we'll have to you, we, we will be obliged to fail you all the course. That's simple, okay? So please, we say that once and again, and there is always someone who go cheating, right? But that's not the way to go through this professional course. Better if you take that seriously and be fair and honest all the time, okay? And finally, uh, that's a practical thing, that's a practical course, and perhaps you think that, yeah, you, you've been working hard, you've been doing all the job, 
But you know the grades will not change because you are saying that, okay? You may tell us that you've been working very hard, but you be aware that the grade that you get will never change because you say so, okay? Or you cannot argue here that you need to pass to graduate or because you know another reason or because you know uh, otherwise you will lose your, your grant. That's not the way, okay? The grades are not depending on this. If you like a good grade, it's just very simple. Earn it, okay? Earn it the way that we are uh, explaining you here once and again with your full commitment designing projects okay that's the way to go through this uh, CSD course it's like being in a company we say that a lot of times CSD okay CSD is just practicing in a company the better you practice the higher the grade that you get, you get, right? That's simple. Okay, so CSD is like designing projects for a real company. You will see that from the very beginning, right? So thank you. Let's see and how it works and good to study and have a good time in this digital circuit and systems course. Thank you.